I'm Sherilyn Skolnicki, and this is Brilliant Balance, the show for working women who are ready to shine. Each week, I bring you ideas, inspiration, and insight on balance, business, and getting it all done gracefully. You ready? Let's be brilliant. This is episode 189 of the Brilliant Balance podcast, how to deal with your to-do list never being done. So my friends, I'm going to set the stage for this episode by revealing that the topic for today really came out of a coaching call that I was hosting in our client community. And I love that call. I love getting to speak with these women. I have a couple different groups and host a session with them every week and Someone was asking just great questions week after week. And her question this week, or the week that this episode kind of came into mind, was how do I deal with this backlog on my to-do list? Like I'm really making progress with having a weekly plan. I'm making a lot of progress with getting things accomplished. I feel so much better in terms of the overall level of balance and control in my life. And of course, this is all music to my ears and exactly why we're doing coaching in the first place. But she said, you know, I have this one problem and it's that I have a backlog in my to-do list, right? Like a pile up of tasks that I'm just not getting to. And I want to understand what are the approaches that I could use to deal with that. And it was like time stood still when she asked this question because I thought, I'm not sure how she's going to feel about my answer to this. And it's something that has come up many times in our coaching community as as people, you know, cycle in and out. It's something I've really been working with my 16-year-old daughter on this year. You know, cuz they're they're just starting to grasp things from a totally different lens at that age, and honestly, it's been a huge piece of my own personal growth throughout adulthood, like from my 20s to through my 30s and into my 40s. my The lens with which I think about that dilemma has changed so much over time. So as I was answering the question in the coaching call, I said to the women who were there, you know, I think this is a podcast episode. And they all had nodded and said, yeah, I think it is. So here we are doing this as a podcast episode. And here's why. Because the question how do I deal with this backlog on my to-do list, right? The running list of things, just this enormous pressure of all the stuff that I don't feel like is done is such a dominant problem of adulthood, right? I, I would argue it probably starts in adolescence as your workload at school increases in, in high school or in college, but certainly this is the dilemma of the working adult, right? There's just so much to do. And my answer was the way you deal with your to-do list never being done is you build a tolerance for the undone. You build tolerance for the undone. This is not a problem that we solve by doing. It's a problem we solve through the way we look at that situation, that problem, that reality. Okay, And why that is so important is because the truth is what we all know in our heart of hearts which is that we are never going to be fully caught up. Take a breath on that because that is a hard thing to come to terms with. But the expectation that we can be caught up or that we will be caught up is actually sort of a relic. It's a leftover from what I think is probably early school days, you know, grade school, maybe junior high, where you reached a point in your day or in your week where you didn't have anything else you had to do. You know, you went to school, you did your work in school, maybe you had a little homework, and then it was done. And the rest of your day was playtime. You didn't have any long-term projects you were working on. And if you doubt this, just watch the way your children react the first time they get assigned a long-term project. Something like, you know, for my son, it was science fair this year, which spanned several months of preparation and research and all the stuff. Maybe it's a group project that they have to work on. Watch how they handle that because it's the first little crack in the foundation of, uh-oh, I'm not actually done done. You know, There's still something hanging over my head here that needs to be done. But we always had the weekend 
right? Where for grade school, surely there's very little homework, if any. And then you had summer vacation. And you'd get to summer vacation and it was just sunshine and watermelon and corn on the cob and time at the pool for months, right? There was no pressure of having things that needed to be done. Even if you had little chores around the house, it didn't have that you know, long list of things that I'm calling the backlog. But today, and as adults, life comes at us at warp speed. You know, I, we talked about this in the coaching call. I think for sure the advent of omnipresent technology, right? The laptop that comes home with us, the phone that is a computer, right? That's in our hands all the time. That was a big inflection point in terms of never feeling done. Remote work. So the, the fact that we're working from home and we've taken out even the rhythm associated with the commute in many cases, dual income households where there isn't someone fully dedicated to handling the work of the house while someone is handling the work of a job. You know, we're, so many of us are handling both. And so it just never ends. There is always more that we can do at home, at work, in all the places. And yet, what is also true is that we need recovery. We need leisure, right? We need pleasure and joy. We need opportunities for creativity and connection. And those things will never make our to-do list. They're not actually sitting on the backlog. They're like in our hearts, yearning for us to give them time and attention. So we have to learn to tolerate the feeling of not being done, of not being caught up, of not having everything finished and tied up in a bow. And listen, you are talking to the poster child for liking to have things tied up in a bow and finished. Like, uh, that is my happy place, right? Check it off my list, tie it up in a bow, and done, right? But we have to learn to embrace a rhythm in our lives that includes rest, even when we know there is still more that can be done, could be done, maybe even should be done, okay? And so what I want to talk about today is, first of all, that. And if that is a new thought or a new idea, we're really dancing with the notion of surrender here. We're really thinking through what does it look like to accept what is, which is this reality that that list will never be fully complete. But we can make it easier to settle into that acceptance. And I'm always thinking about this. This is just how my brain works. It's one of the reasons I do the podcast. It is so much of what I teach inside of the Brilliant Balance coaching experiences is we can make it easier, right? We can, sometimes I'll just say, we have to double click on this and really get underneath it and look at, are there nuances here that can be manipulated that will just make us feel better? So we don't have to tolerate so much heaviness and weight from that, in this case, list of things being undone. So I'm going to share three ways that, three things we can do that definitely help make it easier. But I'm going to underline that without that overall acceptance of the reality that our to-do list will never be done, right? We will probably end our lives with things still sitting on a to-do list waiting for us to do them. And so without that overall acceptance, we're kind of like fighting gravity, but I'm going to give you these three tips or ideas to make it easier. Do you ever find yourself saying, I just need a minute to breathe? While the whole idea of meditation can sound totally intimidating, I've found that stepping away from the chaos of life, even just for a few minutes, is incredibly restorative. So if you're short on time, but could use a few moments of peace right about now, listen to my five-minute meditation for working moms. It'll help you clear your head and come back to your day feeling centered and refreshed. Head over to brilliant-balance.com forward slash breathe. Press play and settle in for a few mini moments of peace right now. The first is a technique for shortening the list overall. Right? If we want to tolerate a to-do list, maybe it's easier to tolerate a short one than a really, really, really long one. And the idea here is to say no more often. Right? If you think about how does a to-do list get built, how does that backlog grow, it's because we keep saying yes 
you know, yes to the project, yes to the next volunteer commitment, yes, 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 all the yeses. And everything we say yes to adds to our overflowing plate. So if we build muscle for knowing how to say no gracefully, and I have a whole podcast on this, right? The art of saying no gracefully is out there for you. Go find it and search. But if we learn to say no more often, then that list can be shorter overall. And there's something psychologically, that just is a little easier for us if the list isn't quite so long, right? We just don't feel quite as behind. So learning to curate that list so that it's not miles and miles long by saying no is the first tip I have for you to make this dynamic a little bit easier. Second thing that I think helps a ton, I know this helps me a ton, is to keep that list prioritized. So most of us, when we're building a to-do list, just kind of throw it all on there, right? It just it's on a post-it note or you know, scrap of paper that's laying around, and it's it's it goes on the list in whatever order it comes to our mind. But if we can keep that list prioritized, then it builds confidence that the things that are undone are less important than the things that are getting done, right? Just stands to reason. If the list is prioritized, you're gonna do the top ones first. So That simple addition to your process of saying, when something is going to make it on this list, I am actually going to get it on there in priority order. Then you can have some confidence that the stuff that's languishing at the bottom is actually the least important stuff. You know, make it up. Maybe it is getting all of those photos into a photo album or a scrapbook, um, which I do not at all. So I'm going to be totally honest about that. There are no scrapbooks and no organized photo albums happening in this household. Because why? Because if I had it on a list at all, it would be at the bottom, right? I have all the photos digitally. Someday when I am old and white-haired, maybe I will sit around and organize them, but not now. So right now I like having them. I like taking them. They're on my phone. They're in the computer. They are not in scrapbooks or albums. You may have, you know, that linen closet in the hallway that you really want to organize, and it just kind of is on your list of something you want to do, but it may not be the most important thing. And so knowing that it is lower on the list than the things you are doing can give you a little more tolerance when you open those doors and the towels fall out and you think, not today, right? This just, it's not time for this yet. So keeping that list prioritized helps you bring some order to when and when you will tackle the various items that are on the list. Which brings me to the third tip to make this dynamic a little bit easier. And that is to schedule the tasks on the list. So if you have a prioritized list, and you do if you're following tip number two, then scheduling when you will be doing the tasks on that list can give you tremendous amounts of mental freedom. And here's what I mean by that. I'll go back to my 16-year-old daughter who I was referencing. Let's say she's studying for finals and she knows that she's going to take six finals. Sitting down on a Saturday, two weeks before finals, thinking, oh my gosh, I have six finals and I have to study for all of them is a completely overwhelming thought. But actually building a schedule for when each of those finals will be studied for And having the visual confidence that it will all get done before it's time to actually take the final allows your brain to rest and say, I know when I'm doing that. Okay. Translate that to your world. Let's say you have a project that you're working on at work and there's deadlines for those tasks. Looking at all the tasks on the project list can be completely overwhelming. How am I going to get all of this stuff done? Look at how many things I have to do, right? We've all had that feeling. When we task out a project, oh my goodness, right? It, it's psychologically overwhelming. But the simple act of assigning a date to each of those tasks tells you, oh, it's not time for that yet. I'm not supposed to be doing that today. So you get a mental reprieve. This week, I need to record some video for a program that we're launching. And I know I need to do it, but I have not been stressing out about it because I know which days it's scheduled on. I'm not looking at the to-do list going, when am I going to make this happen? Is there going to be time? How am I ever going to get it done? So this scheduling, it takes some skill. We actually talk about this kind of a lot in coaching, which is why it came up there. 
But it takes some skill to learn how to effectively estimate how long it's going to take for a task and how to build a schedule in a way that hits all your deadlines. But boy, does that create mental reprieve because it lets you focus on what you've already scheduled for today. And then you can take heart knowing that you've decided when you'll do the rest and it's just not time yet, right? So when my kids were little, we were introduced to a book about managing anxiety in kids and it it talks about the worry box and that you take this worry and you put it in a worry box and you say, I'm gonna worry about that later. You know, I'm gonna have a scheduled time to worry. And this is similar. This is similar in saying, okay, that project or that exam that I have to study for or that thing I have, that closet I have to organize, it's just not for today. So I can clear the mental space by assigning that task to a date or a time in the future and then holding myself to that schedule, okay? So I want to review kind of the main idea from today and some of these tips that I shared. Go all the way back to the beginning. You know, this episode is rooted in how do I deal with my never-ending to-do list? How do I deal with the fact that the to-do list is never done? And the number one most important thing I want you to take away from today is you deal with it by building tolerance for things being undone. You get comfortable with that as an everyday state. Every day, we're going to wake up with things that are undone and every night we're going to go to bed with things that are undone. That is not, the, the game is not get to a place where there's nothing left on the list. The game is feel permission to build in time for leisure, for recovery, for connection, for fun, even while we have things on the to-do list calling out to us, right? So many of you have shared with me like, man, I just can't settle in. I can't play with the kids because all I'm thinking about is the work I have to do. I can't be at that dinner with my spouse because I'm just playing through my head all the things I should be doing. I can't take everybody on a hike because all I'm thinking about is how many things I have to get done. And that is exhausting. That's exhausting. So we want to be able to drop in fully to those moments of connection and leisure and joy, right? We want to be able to do those things while knowing that there's still a list of things and it's waiting for us. And then the three tips I shared to help you make that a little bit easier are one, to learn to say no more often. So the list overall is shorter. Two, to keep the list prioritized so your brain is confident that it's the least important things that you haven't gotten to yet. You're always getting to the most important. And three, to schedule the tasks so you can get that mental reprieve by saying, today's not the day for that. I know it's on the list, but today's not the day. So I actually can clear the brain space for something else. Very powerful ideas in this episode. I would love to hear what you think of them. So if you got something important out of today's episode, or if you get something out of the show ever, if you would take a minute to rate and review the show, I am learning every day how much this helps with getting the Brilliant Balance show on people's radar. It takes two seconds to leave a star rating, one to five stars, and it takes maybe 30 to 60 seconds to submit a one sentence or two sentence review. I am so grateful when these come in. Here's one that came in recently by Kelly37Perform. This podcast is literally life-changing, which is so kind. It covers so many relatable topics and provides insights to boost self-confidence, find your purpose, tips for chaotic schedules, being mindful with your intentions, and so much more. Cheryl Ann walks you through topics to help break down barriers and grasp a new perspective on life. It's truly amazing, and I highly recommend it. Thank you so much for taking a minute to do that. And if you'll take a minute to do that, I would be so grateful. Next week, my friends, we are talking about habits, the good, the bad, and the ugly, how we build them, how we break them, and importantly, how we leverage them to get what we want most. So come back next week. That's all for today. Till next time, my friends, let's be brilliant. This is the podcastfactory.com.